Hello creatives, my name is Tyler Zachary Karenko, fashion designer, entrepreneur, welcome to the house of TZC, where we're building better fashion businesses together. This video is going to be the introduction to my first ever solo collection, volume number one, Tell It To The Bees. <laughs> Tell It To The Bees is a collection inspired by love, loss, devotion, spirituality, folklore, and of course, the secrets that we whisper to the bees. Throughout this video, we're going to be discussing inspiration and concept development, and more specifically, what is inspiring this collection. So let's get into it. Woo! As designers, we have one major objective, and that is to tell stories, fantastical stories about the weird, the strange, the beautiful, and everything in between. In order to do that, we have to create a concept that draws them into our world and offers them a sense of escapism. So the first step of designing your own collection is to just get inspired. As a designer, I find myself most inspired by the characters of dramatic films and theatrical productions, contrasting cultures around the world, the social movements in our societies, and the creatives who shape and innovate the world around them. When inspiration hits, it just hits. And that's because as designers, our subconscious mind is always picking up the little subtleties of life and then tying them together to create a story. And that's why I am the biggest believer that it's important to always be drawing down your ideas because you never know when something is gonna become useful. If you find something that inspires you, anything, after you've jotted it down or drawn a little picture or represented it in some physical form, not just a mental form, super keynote, research it a little. And then after you research it, see if it still inspires you and then go back and draw some more and then go back and do a little bit more research. And if that process continues and continues and continues, that's when you really start to develop a full on concept. And that brings us right into the tell it to the bees concept. This concept actually started in the summer of last year when I started using writing as a way to explore new fashion themes or new fashion collections. And I started rewriting children's fairy tales, but focusing on LGBTQIA plus characters and queer themes, things that mean something to the community that I come from. When I came across what a bee symbolized, it just kicked off a moment in my mind where I was like, this is the inspiration for a collection. This is the moment that I feel like I finally know what I want my first collection to be about. Be about? Pun intended. I then became obsessed with vintage bee outfits. I think that was the number one thing is that I really liked those medieval bee outfits. They're so crazy to look at. Then I started to fall in love with folklores and the stories behind them. And then I just fell into a bottomless pit of research. I'm going to pull up a little mind map for you so that you guys can see exactly what I'm working through here. Let's start with bees themselves. The bee itself as a creature is any of over 20,000 different species that are related to the ant and the wasp. Most of the genus superfamily, Apoida, I think I'm saying that right, don't judge me if I'm not, but I'll put it on the screen, Apoidia, are solitary creatures that do not live in hives which is interesting to me. These creatures are best known for the pollination services that they offer us humans and the wildlife around the world, which keeps our plants and crops from growing extinct. Also honey, honey is important, especially honeybees, which I think are the major inspiration for this collection specifically. Most of the bees we see are female. The male drone bees often die off because they are not needed or necessary by the queen to fertilize eggs because during mating season, she can actually store all of the um, <laughs> male bee honey for when she wants to fertilize her eggs throughout the year. And another thing about bees is that they are deadly. It's either kill or be killed in their communities, which is such an interesting fact. They sting you and they lose their stinger and they die. If a community or a hive does not accept a queen, they kill her off. And most importantly, I love the altruistic behavior that they actually die for each other. They go out of their way to protect each other and die for their cause or their hive. Let's jump over to the body of a bee. In the anatomical structure of a bee, which we're not going to dive super into, but a little bit, bees have five eyes. Two large compound eyes, which allow them to see shapes, and then three small simple eyes on the top of their head, which allow them to see colors. Bees can see in the ultraviolet spectrum, which means that they can actually see more colors than we do. And interesting fact, flowers have developed a unique ability to show off color in the ultraviolet spectrum for bees so that they see more appealing to bees and are more likely to be pollinated. Of course, bees have wings and the structure of a wing is just really cool. And <laughs> bees have like a branched out setae all over their body and more specifically on their arms that becomes very useful for them. 
Not only is it useful because it allows them to attract pollen onto their body, but then they use the setae on their legs to then wipe off the pollen that has attracted to their body, and more specifically, off of their odor-detecting antennae. They also have a really unique mouth shape because they have developed mandibles, which allow them to chew things, but then also a proboscis, which is like a long tube thing that allows them to suck pollen from deep inside the flower. Now I'm gonna move over to their cultural significance within society around the world. These take place in creation myths and play central roles in spirituality on every continent from ancient cave dwelling times all the way to modern day history. Here is an example from spirithillswinery.com where they show Valencia, Spain cave painting from 13,000 BCE. These cultures offer us our earliest archeological evidence of organized apiculture centers. They also show the Hindu tale, Power of the Bees, story of the Brahmari Devi. She transforms into a large black bee and from her bee body pours streams of black bees that eventually envelop the whole world driving away the demons and teaching us that the Brahmaran, the life-protecting hum of the bee, this sound is believed to be the essential sound of the universe in the Hindu cosmology. The spiritualities that we hold for bees themselves extends beyond just the insect. Honey comes from flower nectar being stored in a unique honeycomb wax structure that bees build in their nests. With constant fanning from the buzzing wings of bees, the nectar starts to break down into simple structures through evaporation and it becomes honey. Honey has always been considered magical throughout all of history because it is something that we consume considered a gift from gods themselves. It's lathered on wounds to help heal, it's used in medicines, and it's mentioned in the Bible over 61 times according to forthillumc.com. In ancient times, people who consumed honey were considered to have prosperity and abundance in life, and it's often given as gifts to the dead for people in the afterlife. They even found honey in the tombs of pharaohs in ancient Egypt. Honey is interesting because the first things that come to mind are sweet and floral, and its consistency of slow moving and sticky, but honey can also be smoky and woody and nutty and even spicy. It can be completely clear or completely opaque and range in color from clear as water all the way to dark ambers, reds, and even little bits of dark purple. Moving away from their spirituality a little bit and down into the actual beekeepers, which like I said at the beginning, was kind of what inspired this collection. Beekeepers, aka apiaris, are individuals individuals who assist bees in maintaining and managing colonies of bees, primarily by protecting bees, hives, and queens. Their outfits are the coolest part. Outfits usually consist of a veil, gloves, sleeves, or a one-piece suit that protects beekeepers from being stung by the bee. Typically, beekeeping outfits are white or light colored, and I'm just gonna say it, I find the medieval beekeeping outfits to be cool as shit. They have really unique shapes of these like arced shapes that, you know, kind of resemble a beehive themselves, and that the fact that they're doing this in linen, that's kind of interesting. I also find their unique veils really cool, how they are flat along the face, in the 1800s, typically just included their natural day wear or their natural clothing with an element of a hat and a veil put over it. In the 1950s bee market, where people are buying and trading and selling, you have day wear or even formal wear mixed with these beekeeping elements of the veils and the hats. It's such an interesting concept. And then of course, the modern suits, which can be completely head to toe ventilated. They're made of heavy white to yellow cotton canvas. I just associate these beekeeping outfits with astronauts and with space wear. It's like we're going into a whole new world. Now we're gonna jump to the main event, the folklore of Tell It to the Bees. Telling the bees is a tradition seen in many European nations in which bees would be told of the important life events of their beekeepers. Deaths, births, marriages, or departures or returns to the household. It is said by beekeepers that if this custom is omitted in a specific life event, that bees would often become agitated, they would leave the hive, or they would die altogether. This concept has unknown origins, but it is seen as maybe coming from ancient Greek or Roman times. They believe that bees bridge the gap between life and the afterlife, kind of giving bees a symbolism of death, which is so unique because we commonly associate them with bringing life to everything. This practice of telling the bees is most commonly seen in Europe and in the US. And the most common across all cultures is to go to the bees to tell them a secret by getting down on their level, knocking a certain amount of times on the hive, and then whispering in a low hushed tone. The bees are then said to respond by creating a unison buzzing of what sounds like a heartbeat, which is exactly what is connected to all of the earlier mythological stuff that we talked about. 
For weddings, couples may bring a piece of their wedding cake and place it at the entrance of the beehive. For funerals, people may drape black crepe fabrics over the beehive. They may place a funeral biscuit in front of the beehive, bury something from their beekeeper underneath the hive, or more specifically, some cultures will change the direction the way that the hive is facing. They may need to face the hive towards the house, or face it away from the house, or towards sunrise, or towards sunset, or even in some examples, the oldest son has to take the hive and change the degree by even 10% from what it was before. This allows the bees to know that something is changing in their life and allows them to stay connected with the people that are going to take care of them. Even after Queen Elizabeth's passing, the royal beekeeper had to go to the royal beehives and announce her death, but not only her death, also about the ascension of King Charles III. I continue to research Tell It to the Bees. And if you type that into Google, the first thing that's gonna come up is the movie, Tell It to the Beats, that talks about passion, sex, and a secret love between two lesbian women in the 1950s and what they had to endure to love each other. First of all, I will always be inspired by 1950s. I was really inspired by the small town European vibe. I also really enjoyed the color palette of this movie. These like dark, unsaturated tones, greens and blues and reds and yellows and golds and creams and tans and browns and beiges. It was all very, you know, muted and really, really unique and interesting. When I go about watching a movie that's going to inspire me, I do take a lot of inspiration from the vintage aspect, the culture aspect that we're looking at, the color palette, as well as the silhouettes and the articles of clothing that I saw in the movie. And a good concept for what I wanted to do was to kind of create this like farmer beehive worker wear and then kind of transform that into something maybe a little bit more high fashion. After I watched the movie, I continued to look further into the folklore of Tell It to the Bees and I came across a poem. The poem is kind of long, so I'm only gonna read the portion that inspired me the most. This section of this poem comes from John Greenleaf Whittier's poem, Tell the Bees, and it describes the practice of doing so. It says, before them, under the garden wall, Wall, forward and back, went drearily singing the chore girl's song, draping each hive with a shred of honey. Trembling, I listened, the summer sun had the chill of snow, for I knew she was telling the bees of one gone on the journey we must all go. Stay at home, pretty bees, fly not hence, Mistress Mary is dead and gone. I loved it. I thought it was so cool and unique and interesting and it explained the practice of doing all of the stuff I was reading about and it was really, it's gorgeous. I especially, especially loved draping each hive with a shred of black. I also really loved that they were talking about the summer sun had a chill of snow. We're talking about decay and death and about life and death and birth and rebirth and all of these things that just keep coming up throughout all of this research. Now we're going to take a step out of the research because this video would never end if I continue to give you all the research that I went through. I'm gonna pull themes out of everything that we just discussed. I'm gonna break it down into four categories, one being design elements, a second being a theme that I can create a story through, fabrics, and then colors. Starting with the design ideas, I really like this idea of the branched out hairs that make bees different from wasps. I'm also really interested in the hexagon shape, and maybe I can use that in some of my collection. Another design idea is that I can somehow transform vintage bee outfits. I can use their shapes and their textures, maybe their colors, the veils, the gloves, the, you know, everything, all the way from medieval times to modern day and figure out how to somehow mold those into something modern. I really believe that I can find a way to include this element of maybe draping some sort of black fabric or black crepe fabric over the designs, figuring out how to include this, these shreds of black, which is such an interesting, beautiful way to describe fabric. Now moving over to the themes here. A theme that I found throughout my entire research was this idea of honey and what honey symbolizes and represents. I really like the idea of maybe exploring honey as a concept and maybe turning that into some sort of fabric. And so I'm also gonna put that down in the fabrics list here. Another theme is monarch and royalty. More specifically, I guess, queen. I think that I can play on that feminism and I can play on those elements that I tip that you may typically see in royalty garbs. I could also maybe include the theme of military. The hive kind of works as a military, so maybe that can be a theme that I apply to the collection. Also then, maybe spirituality. Make it somehow represent spirituality or represent religion in a way that is not so direct. I want to use this collection to explore death and decay. Because of the bee's symbolism of being the bridge between the afterlife and life, I want to figure out a way to talk about decay or death in this collection. 
I think I can find a way to use that symbolism and rework it so that it fits exactly into the concept. Maybe the flowers are decaying, or maybe things are feeling brittle, or maybe things are kind of slowly washing away. I'm not sure how I'm going to use it yet, but I think that that could be an interesting element in this collection. Finally, of course, and I've already decided on this one, I want to make sure that my collection uses love, adoration, respect, and passion as design elements that inspire the people who are going to eventually wear the garments. Let's fill out the rest of the fabric section since we already started. Through the research, I came across different types of fabrics that people use in their spirituality or their connection or their relationship with bees. I think the cotton canvas was an interesting one. I think black crepe was an interesting one. And I think that linen might be an interesting thing. I really think that those may be some fabrics that we end up using in the final collection. And then finally, let's go into colors. One color palette comes from the movie Tell It to the Bees. Dark, muted, unsaturated colors. I'm gonna call it my bee countryside. That's a bad name, so. We'll fix that later if we choose to go with it. And then finally, my honey color palette. Somehow I'm going to include it. It's everything from its transparency to its opaqueness, as well as dark ambers, reds, oranges, yellows, golden colors, those rich, beautiful colors. And maybe I'll combine some of these color palettes to make them more unique and tell a full story. But I am not sure yet, so you have to stick around to see that. In closing, this video has been packed with symbolism and folklore and research and bees and beekeeping outfits and blah, 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 blah. I think we finally nailed down a concept and a story for what we want to do. The story or the concept behind this collection is of loss and love and devotion and the secrets that we whisper to the bees. Next week, we are going to take some of these themes that we developed and we're going to start interpreting them into actual fashion designs. We're going to be talking about the sketching process and the actual design process of taking themes and turning them into designs. I can't wait to see you in the next video. Thank you for sticking around. Sweet dreams, creatives.